teams there in front. Do not discount the turnovers. That's a huge factor. And although they've been out rebounded, they have played a very good game. It's not that the Pacers, Eddie, have necessarily played badly, but Phoenix has just been superb. They've been absolutely on their mark. And when you have two guys like Chris Paul and Devin Booker who are so creative with the basketball, Devin Booker can create mismatch nightmares. You have to double him oftentimes. So when that ball gets swung around, you're going to give up some open three-point shots. Here tonight, the Phoenix Suns are knocking them down. Don't normally give our Kroger performance of the game to a player on the losing side. And although this one is not yet officially over, it appears as though the Pacers will suffer a loss. We still, though, will go with the modest Sabonis. 28 points, a career-high tying 22 rebounds, four assists. He could get to 30 points for the second time in his career if he hits these foul shots. He continues to excel. Nine double-doubles in nine games. And we are reviewing something. What are we reviewing? Does anyone know? That is a great question. I just noticed that the, the Me too. officials are at the table. The lights are, are lit. And it's whether Chris Paul fouled Sabonis here. Obviously, Indiana's out of challenges. So this is Phoenix's call. And so far, we've not seen a view that shows that it would be overturned. 12-point game with 56 and 6 tenths seconds to play. Tough road trip. Schedule always ebbs and flows, and you never want to say an NBA schedule is easy, but when you start with seven of your first nine at home, that is, relatively speaking, a favorable schedule. Now, though, five on the road. You've got the Suns again. The Clippers are good. The Pacers have lost 11 in a row in Portland, and the other two are the Warriors, who have been up and down but have had some spectacular games this year and the Kings, who have lost four of their last five. That is a challenging road trip, Eddie. Very challenging. You have your work cut out for you just from the travel aspect itself. Clearly, there's a different dynamic with the fans in, in some, some instances of limited capacity. Others, there won't be any at all. But still a challenge when, when these teams that, that you're playing against, they, they play at a high level and significant travel in between. Pacers have only played two road games and won them both in Chicago and earlier this week in New Orleans. They are still looking at this with 56 and 6 tenths seconds to play. Mark Davis is the crew chief. And now Scott Wall is over at the Indiana bench, perhaps explaining something. He leaves. Davis is still at the table. Well, maybe you heard Mark Davis. Maybe you didn't. The verdict is a jump ball in the center jump circle. So no foul shots for Sabonis. Looks like we had some confrontation as well between uh, Pacers assistant coaches and Chris Paul. There's, they're still going back and forth with each other. Well, Chris Paul is known as an acerbic individual. And depending on how you look at him, either he's a, a competitive fireball, that's if he's on your team, or he's a dirty, sneaky player if he's on the other team. I can assure you, more people want him on their team yes, than not. No question. <laughs> no question. Yes. Aiton and Turner will jump, and the jump ball will be controlled in backcourt by Brogdon. Time, though, is of the essence. 52 seconds left. Indiana down 12. Brogdon to the forecourt left edge. Brogdon will pull up and let a three go from the left side, and he nails it. Brogdon has hit his second three of the night. Phoenix by nine. 45 and 9 10 seconds to go. Booker spins away from a double team in backcourt, brings it across the timeline. Down to 40 seconds to play. The Pacers attempt to trap him, and they can't. He'll get rid of it right side. Bridges will dribble it across the foul line, and now Booker has it with 30 seconds to go. Pull up jump shot left wing, and Paul hits it. Explain this to me, Eddie Gill. I don't understand why you don't foul there. If you if you let them run that much clock out, you're done anyway. Yeah, exactly. A lot of times coaches and teams will try to get one trap and see if they can get a turnover. If they don't get it, they get the foul. The Pacers elect to not foul as Malcolm Brogdon comes down and knocks down a three. But only 17 seconds remain. That cuts the Phoenix lead to eight, and this time they do foul as Paul moves into the forecourt. Simone yes. just picks up the foul. Just finishing that thought. Yeah, typically you get one trap and see if you can get create a turnover, especially in a late game situation like this. And a lot well, of times that next one is. That's what I'm getting at. Once you yeah. don't get the turnover, then you must foul. Agreed. Ball is in. Paul has it. Lobs it into the forecourt. And now Sabonis fouls. Bridges will go to the line. They're up by eight are the Suns at 123 to 115. 12 and 8, 10 seconds to go. And that... 
than this, depending on where it finishes, is already the most points the Pacers have given up in a game this season. Bridges is on the line. He has had a superb night, a career-high 32 points. His best effort previously was 26. And he hits the foul shot here. Well, if you turn the ball over three times and hit all 15 of your foul shots, you are well on your way to a win. Your chances are going to increase dramatically if you're able to do that and shoot the three ball at almost 40%. You have a good shot. Bridges made them both. Now just a matter of the final score. Ten seconds to play. Oladipo right edge to the corner. Catch and shoot three. Justin Holiday missed it. Turner rebounds and he'll lay it in. That'll give Turner a double-double with 15 points and 10 rebounds. But it's not enough and the clock will run out with the Suns. Eight points better than the Pacers. We saw them go eight and zero, Eddie, in the restart. That was impressive. We thought they would be better this season. And they're seven and three. That's one of the best records in the NBA. They look like they will be a force as this season rolls on. I think this team is a true contender. You mentioned what they were able to do in the bubble, how they finished the season with that young group. You add Chris Paul and Jay Crowder to it. You have a veteran presence. Now you have another guy who can create plays outside of Devin Booker. They got a real shot. That's Eddie Gill. Kind enough to join us tonight as he ventures over from the dark side. When are you with us again? Is it the Dallas game? Uh, I believe so. A couple weeks. Yeah, okay. a couple few Well, weeks. we'll look forward to that. You can catch Eddie on the post game, although I know you won't because you'll be listening to ours. However, <laughs> if you do decide to, Eddie's on there with Jeremiah. Check that out. Eddie will be with us again soon. For Pat Boylan, I'm Mark Boyle. Pat also goes over to TV. I'm the only loyalist here. He goes to TV. You go to TV. Fenster Maker and I stay here well every once in a while we wrestle you away and every you once in a while yeah <laughs> all right be good thanks thank you that's eddie gill the pacers are losers in this one suns led most of the way they played a really really strong game and they beat the pacers 125 to 117 i believe i forgot to mention that although i think i did say demontis Sabonis was a uh, sabonis was our kroger performer of the game it goes without saying doesn't it that kroger proudly sponsors our performance of the game tonight's final score was the Phoenix Suns 125, the Indiana Pacers 117. Stay with us. Complete post-game coverage and fe uh, featuring a visit with the Hall of Famer Slick Leonard is next. This is the Ascension St. Vincent Radio Network. Want to win big with your pets? PetSmart has everything they need right when you need it. Score food, toys, and treats for your dog, cat, reptile, fish, and small pet and get it fast with PetSmart. 